Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beer Review. So over in the beer room, on a bloody cold night, I'm freezing my bits off today at work. And we're going up to Nottingham Brewery for their rock bitter. Nottingham Brewery just recently been cranking out the beers, doing new beers, putting beers into bottle. Good to see new beers come into bottle. You know, a lot of people can't get to the pubs. And it's a good name, good way of getting your beers out there. They've got this from Adventure Beer, as always. Uh, although these days, the locals um, just can't put in their beers that much into bottles and cans, it seems. So, a pale ale, first brewed by Nottingham Brewer in the 1800s. Wow. As a refreshing quaffling ale for the... Quaffing ale, not, not a quaffling. No, not a quaffling. <laughs> For the thirsty factory workers of the city. What about the gardeners? As a thirsty gardener. The original Nottingham Brewer was located on Mansfield Road, close to where Victoria Centre is now. The brewery tap, designed by celebrated local architect Watson Fothergill. Fothergill's near Nottingham Castle. Um, is still standing, now known as the Rose of England pub. Is it really? God, that's interesting. Rose of England. It, I know a story about that. Uh, the brewery can be traced back to 1847 when James Long was listed as an listed as an East India and Pale Ale brewer on the site. After its closure by then owners Whitbread, Shipbread, yeah. Um, the name remained dormant. In 2001, it was resurrected by Philip Darby and Niven Balfour, found as a Bramcut Brewery that was later to become Castle Rock Brewery. Their plan was to carry on the tradition of brewing award winning and ales such as Rock Bitter and Rock Mild, a nod to the famous old brand originally named after the sandstone cellars beneath the original brewery which were an ideal storage location. Wow, that's a fantastic bit of history. Oh yeah, the Rose of England. If it's the one I'm thinking of. I went, we was in pub on a pub call on that, me and mates. Yeah, so I'm not guilty. And anyway, I got back from the toilet. They got one of these cake things on the bar. My mates had scoffed the cake, lifted it up and just took the cake out and scoffed it. I will not name names, but they know who they are. And uh, but anyway, yeah, Nottingham Brewery. Wow. And this, this is where heritage, not losing our bloody breweries to some arsehole brewery that comes from out of town that just wants to take over the pubs, close the brewery down, take the beers, never brew them again, and just take the pub and put their shite beers in the pubs. And yeah, I'm thinking the brewery's like Green King for starters. And and the ones who took over Shipston's, uh, was it Scottish and Newcastle, which later turned out to be Heineken or so, I don't know. Um, I don't know that much about the history, but I do know I don't like people coming in, taking over and doing the dirty. That I don't like. Anyway. So... I'm drinking a bit of Britain, a bit of Nottingham history now. And that, as a Nottingham person, born and bred here, born at the City Hospital, um, lived here all my life, 52 now. Might not look it, but I don't know. With my hat off, I probably don't look it, but <laughs> probably look older uh, with grey hair. Uh, but it's just what it is. So I can smell the maltiness of this beer already. And there we go. So, in the light, it looks more golden. In my side, it looks quite pale, but... And one of these days, I'll get me arse over to St. Peter Street. I keep saying this, to go to St. Peter Street and go to what is now the Brewery Tap. God, that would be... That would be... For, for Nottingham Brewery to take back uh, the pub that I've just mentioned... Um, as their pub. That'd be something. Nice 
nice malty beer mm, into sweetness. You may look and think, why the hell is like this? These are my work clothes. And uh, yeah. Forest t shirts, always. So, t shirt, t shirt, jacket, waterproof jacket, i.e., thin jacket. And obviously hat because it's bloody cold sat on the mower in the pouring wind and rain this time of the year yes yeah there were, there were several hours of very very cold mowing today although it's done it's all rolled stripes and looks beautiful and uh, it's what i do and uh, the arboretum castle used to look amazing but sadly these days neither do and uh, yeah not in city council Whatever it is, is sometimes in life I think things are meant to be, and even though shit happens, and sadly, you know, it happens sometimes uh, for a good reason. And I look where I am now in, in the job I'm in, and uh, yes. I'd like to be paid a bit more, but that'd be all. Um, but what I'm creating as a gardener is special. And it's only getting more special. As I'm winning more and more, it gets more special. And a nine acre site, a three acre site, and even a one and a half acre garden next door to my Newark workplace, all three of them are becoming smaller, more colourful, more interesting. And for me, it's invigorating, you know. I still see things that annoy the absolute hell out of me, but I, I'm like, karma will come. Then the blinkers come off. <laughs> uh. a nice beer. First ever time in bottle. Never seen it in bottle before. Uh, so big thank you to Nottingham Road for putting your beer in bottles. Um, like I say, if I don't always get to the pub, and uh, to be honest, we hardly ever go into the Nottingham City Centre these days. Why? Because it's as rough as Badger's Arse in the City Centre. Um, yeah, it's like walking into a different city now compared to what it used to be. I mean, it was always a bit rough, but blooming heck. You look, you don't get mugged walking through. Um, yeah, it's, it's not the most palatable place. I prefer the out, out, out of city. Usually, you know, especially the pubs I frequent, you don't get the that type of people. Which is good, yeah. I mean, I can do, I can deal with the rough people. Worked on the public park for twenty odd years, you know. Um, dealing with rough people it, it was and difficult people was the game. And then going into supermarkets and dealing with the same people who think they own you in the supermarket. I mean, it was bad enough working for the council. People who think they own you. I pay your wages. Yeah, mate, but you don't even work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You sign on. You don't pay no one's wages, duck. <laughs> I pay your wages. Oh, dear. That is funny, though. I'll give you an example of funny. So, where I live, there's, shall we say, a toxic character at the top of the street. Um... Had parties in COVID, an absolute awful person. Had young, young under 18s around, getting pissed up, fucking jumping on people's cars. Not my car, I'd have, I'd have gone out and uh, dealt with them. Um, police called, you know, and 
been dumping stuff on the street for a long time. Fly tipping, which that is what it is. When you, you put something on the street, you are actually fly tipping. Um, you put it on the edge of your garden saying, scrappers, please collect. Job's good. Em. Anyway, she's been dumping stuff on the streets for a long time. She posted something last night, yesterday or the day before. Oh, look what these have done outside my house. Post um, a scruffy looking settee. And uh, my camera didn't catch it. And I'll guarantee you, it was her who did it. Um, it's absolutely hilarious that, that where it was put is smack facing her house. Where her cameras don't get. Yeah. I hate when people disrespect my neighbourhood. And it's like, oh, Jesus Christ. You're the absolute worst person. And uh, even the council don't like her because she's a gobby get who gets what she wants all the time. But in some ways, you know, with councils, you go down the nice route, you're ignored. You go down, if you complain all the time, they do it to appease you. And it's amazing how the, the world has turned into a complaining world. And rather than saying something nice and getting where you want, uh, these people get where they want and get more and more. <sighs> anyway, on with a bit. Bit of Nottingham life there for you. I mean, I do live in Nottingham, yeah. I don't live on one of the rougher states, but it's certainly colourful sometimes. And to be honest, it, you can live on a posh estate and have an arsehole living next door to you, can't you? You know, uh, just because someone's got money does not make them a nice person. <laughs> Luckily, we're surrounded by some good people as well as some scroats. But uh, yeah, there are some scroats. There are some people that do weird things like four o'clock in the morning, drive home and have music blaring from the cars. It's like, what's that noise? You in bed and it's like, what's that? Uh, yeah, and you just want to go out uh, with something in your hand, maybe like a chair, and go up to the car and go, Oi, turn that bloody music off. Uh, these days, you get arrested for telling them. So a nice bitter, bit of peppery spice going off um, in the fruitiness, bit of peppery spice. And, uh, you know, I love, as a Nottingham person, I absolutely love the the story behind this beer and a behind Nottingham Brewery. One of the days I'll get over to the brewery. Uh, I keep saying I'm going to do it and... Uh, we was at Canning Circus one day, but we, we had to cut short our visit. And, uh, yeah, sadly. Um, would I drink this again? Always the question. Hell yes. Probably drink it at the Robin Hood Beer Festival this year, if anything. At five, a good 4.2 out of five for me. Bit of history. Love history. Thank you for watching. See you soon.